Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, talking about Chapter 11, Lesson 3, The Mesozoic Era. That's right, it's the lesson on dinosaurs. Yeah, I just, I just love saying it. Anyway, let's get going with this lesson. Yes, we'll be talking about the age of dinosaurs. In today's lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Question number one, what major geologic events occurred during the Mesozoic Era? And question number two, what does fossil evidence reveal about the Mesozoic Era? So let's go ahead and let's get going with this. Uh, the Mesozoic era is divided into three periods. The first being the Triassic, the next being the Jurassic, and the third one being the Cretaceous period. Now, in terms of geology of the Mesozoic era, we have one real big event that we want to talk about, and that's essentially the breakup of Pangaea. If you remember from my last lesson on the Paleozoic era, is that by the end of the Permian period, uh, all of the continents had coalesced together in one giant supercontinent called Pangaea, which if you remember from my studies, earlier studies earlier this year, we talked about Alfred Wegener and the theory of continental drift. And so that was based on this idea that the continents at one time were all together. So this is where this all ties in. And Pangaea broke into two continents during the late Triassic period. Uh, it split off into two continents, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, one of the continents was what we call uh, Gondwana land, Okay, and which included the future continents of South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. Essentially, the southern half of Pangaea uh, separated and became Gondwana land. Another continent was Laurasia, which included the future continents of North America, Europe, and Asia. And if we look at, by the time the late Jurassic period, we start seeing this. This is all Laurasia up here. Gondwana land is down here. But, of course, during the early... Early Triassic period, that's when this picture was set about 237 million years ago, essentially it was still one giant continent of Pangaea. And so during the Triassic period, that's where it split off, which we'll get into a little bit more detail in a minute. Now, in terms of the climate of the Mesozoic era, it was warmer even more so than the climate of the Paleozoic era. There were no ice caps, the sea levels rose, they came up odd up. And the result, because the sea levels were so high, we saw a lot of narrow channels forming in what we consider now kind of low plains areas of continents. Especially whenever you look at the Cretaceous period, right here in the late Cretaceous period, only about 30 million years before uh, the extinction of the dinosaurs, notice most of the Great Plains of North America was actually underwater. Okay, and the Rocky Mountains were right here. And us in Louisiana, we're right here, but then also the lowlands of South America on the side of the Andes, which hadn't quite risen up, the extensive basin of the Saharan, and then most of Europe, really outside of the Alps, was all underwater. And that's because of such a high rise in sea level. So throughout the Mesozoic era, North America drifted, which if you remember from the Paleozoic era, North America was essentially at the equator. And... As throughout the era, it drifted further and further to the west. And as North America hit a plate to the west, we had uplift in the Rocky Mountains form. So compared to the Appalachians, the Rocky Mountains are a lot younger than the Appalachian Mountains. And as a result, they're a lot higher because they haven't been exposed to as much weathering and erosion. But because there isn't any real active geologic uplift going on, uh, they're not growing anymore. So essentially, given enough time, given enough millions of years, the Rockies will only be as tall as the Appalachians are now. So, and here is, here's a simple animation I found talking about the drifting of the continents uh, and the breakup of Pangaea throughout the uh, Mesozoic era. So 150 million years ago is essentially... Uh, halfway through the Triassic, uh, in, into the Jurassic era. Okay, so we're starting to see the break up. And as we move it across, 110, 90, 80, 70, and by the time 60, this is pretty much kind of after the uh, dinosaurs have been di died out, you see how the continents continue to split further and further apart. Okay, so really over a rapid period of time, that's where you see that movement in which we go until today where we're at. Okay, so let's talk about Mesozoic life. Okay, so that was the geology. What was life like? Dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs share a common ancestor with present-day reptiles such as a crocodile. Dinosaurs were actually not reptiles like we think of them today. Uh, many scientists believe that dinosaurs are warm-blooded. Uh, uh, and they have differing bone structure. And this is the big thing which we'll look at in a second. Is that dinosaurs and crocodiles, or most other uh, reptiles differ in their hip structure. 
Okay, dinosaurs were dominant Mesozoic land vertebrates that walked with their legs positioned directly under or below their hips. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let's look at this picture. The difference between reptiles and dinosaurs. Here's a saltwater crocodile uh, skeleton. If you notice his legs, his legs are all kind of set off. It's sprawling, which is what you see right here. Okay, and however, dinosaurs and mammals have what we call an erect posture, where the legs, the leg bones go straight down, allowing us to stand upright. If you look at this triceratops skeleton, if you look at the legs, the leg bones and stuff are positioned directly below the body. They're not spread out. And because they weren't spread out, it allowed dinosaurs to stand taller than they normally would. Uh, scientists hypothesize that some dinosaurs are actually more closely related to present-day birds than present-day reptiles. In fact, uh, most uh, a growing number of scientists believe that uh, dinosaurs, uh, one of the dinosaurs, late dinosaurs, was a common ancestor to all birds today, uh, mainly through bone structure and also the fact they were warm-blooded and some had feathers and things like that. Okay, so because some had wings, feathers, claws, and teeth, which I'll show you this fossil right here. Okay, this is a Cretaceous era raptor because you see the claws right here okay you see the claws and it looks like it looks like a velociraptor like if you remember watching Jurassic Park and stuff like that but notice the face the face is really pointed like a beak and its arms are really long and the fingers are really elongated as though they were wings so we see a lot of dinosaur fossils like that and uh, dinosaurs were of course the dominant reptiles on land in fact they were the dominant animals on land period uh, because they grew, you know, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Tyrannosaurus rex, all those dinosaurs were gigantic. They were 30, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet long, and they were 30, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet high, especially in the large brachiopods. But, so they were the dominant life on land. Other types lived in the sea and flew in the air. So dinosaurs were just all over the place. Land, sea, and air, they were the dominant organisms, Okay. Uh, what we call plesiosaurs. Plesiosaurs were Mesozoic marine reptiles that small heads, long necks, and flippers. So here's an example of a plesiosaur. Uh, and of course, all these pictures are from the Houston Museum of Natural Science, the New Paleontology Wing. And if you notice the bone structure of the, the hands, they're flippers just like what you would see in a whale. Okay, it's got an elongated body structure, has a tail. And plesiosaurs had four flippers, which they would use to swim around. Now, they weren't the only marine uh, dinosaurs. This is a mesosaur, okay? So think of it as a, think of it as an alligator that could actually swim, okay? And not just kind of swim, but swim out in the ocean and swim deep. And if you look at this mesosaur, if you look at his fingers, they're shaped a lot like flippers. And so this one's attacking a turtle. But the face is shaped a lot like what we would see in a crocodile or a alligator. And finally, there are the ichthyosaurs. Okay, here's an ichthyosaur fossil. Okay, ichthyosaurs were essentially fish-like reptiles, so they're kind of like dolphins almost. And dinosaurs didn't always lay eggs, which you see in a green circle. I've zoomed in. I took another close-up shot. And if you look in the red circle right here, if you look really closely, you'll see a baby live ichthyosaur. So obviously this was a mother who was killed and fossilized, but she was pregnant with young. And also if you look right here, you see the flippers of this, plesios, uh, this ichthyosaur. It has flippers a lot like the plesiosaur here or even the mesosaur. Now, in addition, you had uh, pterosaurs were mesozoic flying reptiles that had large bat-like wings. Okay, and the largest of them Whereas the Quetzalcoatlus, which I just probably just completely butchered, uh, these are like pterodactyls, or see, and they were completely huge. These huge wingspans. And what you see right here, right here, is actually just a finger, okay? It's not a complete bone structure as much as it's just a finger. Uh, it's not like complete arms. So it's essentially like bats in that, how bats, whenever one of their, their wings spread out because it's based on skin touching between the individual finger bones. Uh, and they grew from real tiny bird size to these obvious monster, you know, 20, 30 foot long 
uh, birds, uh, uh, pterosaurs rather. And then finally, in addition to pterosaurs and plesiosaurs, mammals evolved during the Mesozoic era, but they remained small. Mammals only became dominant during the Cenozoic era, which is the next lesson we're going to be talking about. So what happened to the dinosaurs? They grew, they spread out all over the place. Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous periods. You can look at it all over the place. There's all over the internet. There are tons of books and television programs, documentaries that you can watch and find out information about dinosaurs. And as we all know, they ended up dying out. And they died out about 60 mil 65 million years ago during what we call the Cretaceous extinction event. Now, the current understanding uh, was that scientists hypothesized that a large meteorite hit Earth, creating large amount of dust that blocks sunlight. And this is at the Chicxulub impact crater is where scientists generally believe it. It's, off, it's a buried crater off the coast of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. And essentially 65 million years ago, this meteor hit a uh, huge, absolutely huge amounts of uh, dirt, dust, water were thrown up into the air. And because it was thrown up into the air, uh, it f began filtering out, which if, you're, if you live in South Louisiana, uh, and especially if you ask your parents or your grandparents, they used to, they would burn cane fields, okay? And so the cane fields, they would be burning the cane fields, so the sugar cane, uh, and you couldn't like drive through the road and stuff like that, or the, sometimes the sun would get blocked out by just clouds of smoke. And so this huge impact would cause huge forest fires all over the place, which would create even more soot. And scientists believe that in addition to this, around this time, you probably had, might have had a series of volcanic eruptions could have added to the sunlight blocking dust. And as a result of this sunlight being bl uh, blocked by all the dust, the ambient temperatures of Earth dropped dramatically. And because, reptile, uh, because uh, dinosaurs, in many cases, especially large ones like Tyrannosaurus rex, uh, triceratops and things like that during the late Cretaceous, because they were such large creatures, they needed a lot of food to eat. And uh, if you remember food webs in a relationship, the apex predators couldn't get their food because uh, all of their prey below them uh, was not able to get food because primarily there wasn't enough sunlight and as a result the plants couldn't grow and because plants couldn't grow uh the herbivores couldn't eat and because the herbivores couldn't eat the carnivores eat, couldn't eat and essentially food webs all, all over and ecosystems all over the planet collapsed really quickly so without sunlight plants died and without plants animals died like i just explained so that should pretty much wrap up your notes now what adds to the Cretaceous extinction event is what we call the KT or the KPB line, uh, which is a dividing line geologically between rocks of different eras and different periods. And this is out in Western Canada. And the KT or the KPB line is essentially this red line I have. Everything below that is Cretaceous area rocks. Everything above that's more modern rocks. And if you notice, this is a pretty dramatic example where the rocks below are light colored sandstones, but above it, there are a lot darker sandstones. So obviously something dramatically changed in the environment. And in addition, one of the clues that scientists have that a meteorite uh, caused the extinction of the dinosaurs is the presence of iridium. Iridium, if you remember, is a, an element on the periodic table. It's extremely rare on Earth, but it's pretty common in meteorites. And pretty much worldwide, around 65 million years ago, there's a thin layer in the, the geologic rock record of rocks that are absolutely rich in iridium. And so scientists believe there's, since iridium is so rare on Earth, the only way to get this much iridium in this shorter time was you'd have to have a large meteorite, or some scientists would even say a series of meteorites hitting Earth that the Chicxulub just happened to be the largest one. So the dinosaurs pretty much ran, ran the show in Earth from 250 million years ago to 65 million years ago. Uh, and so let's wrap up this lesson right here. So by the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer the following questions. Question number one, what major geologic events occurred during the Mesozoic era? Well, the major geologic event was the breakup of Pangaea, uh, allowing for our modern continents as well as the Rocky Mountains to form. Remember, Gondwana land was the southernmost uh, half of Pangaea. Laurasia was the northernmost part. And the Chicxulub impact caused traumatic climatic, climate change over a short period of geologic time affecting the life. Now, what does fossil evidence reveal about the Mesozoic era? Oh, we know all about dinosaurs. We know lots about dinosaurs. Paleontologists have made absolute huge strides in discovering what life was like during the 
uh, Mesozoic era, and they were the dominant form of life over all areas of the earth, the land, the sea, and the air. You had plesiosaurs, mesosaurs, ichthyosaurs in the water, you had pterosaurs in the air, you had all sorts of dinosaurs all over land. Of course, they were different from reptiles and that they stood upright because uh, their, their legs were underneath their bodies unlike modern reptiles. Uh, but the KPB or the KT extinction event, that's the Chicxulub crater, the impact, ended their dominance leading the way for mammals to spread during the Cenozoic era. So that's your lesson, Mesozoic era. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Any comments, most welcome. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for your time. Catch you later.